In this video, I have some plug trouble because it doesn't fit. I talk numbers of 18 volts and I make some noise. It's Da Vinci time. So further to your request, here's the first review of a lithium ion phosphate based solar generator on this channel. And so you don't miss out on future videos that may answer questions you haven't come across yet, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon and come back for some more. Anyway, enough chat, let's go. So to save you the pain of watching me pull all of this out of the various boxes, I've just posted a couple of pictures on screen to show you how it came packaged originally. So let's have a look through the contents now. Uh, this is the uh, manual, which is actually a really decent size. And as you'll see, it's actually really clearly laid out. Actually one of the better manuals, because they normally come in a mini format, which has actually made them a little bit more difficult to read and refer to. And you get a little warranty card here. So here's your solar charging cable here. So these are MC4 connectors to connect up to your solar panel. And this is a DC output here to plug straight into the unit. Uh, the next one we've got here is the traditional cigarette lighter socket connector here to DC output. Again, the DC output plugs into the input on the box to charge from a 12 volt socket. You also get a USB-C to USB-C cable. Again, these are always really handy to have about because this has a USB-C uh, output on it. And here's the uh, power brick that comes with it as well. So you get the traditional uh, mains connector here, the figure eight connector here. It goes into the power brick and I'm not sure if you can see that on there, but that's actually a power brick that supplies 15 volts at three amps. So that's good for 45 watts charging. So that's the contents of what comes in the box. Let's have a look around this. Time to have a quick look around now. So let's start with the front. And we've got two standard USB ports here and they're good for 2.4 amps a piece. We have a USB uh, quick charge port here, which is good up to 18 watts. And we have a USB-C PD output here and that's good up to 60 watts. We've got a 12 volt uh, DC output here and that's good up to 10 amps. And what I will say though, is this is a down as a DC 5521 socket, but I found it's actually a DC 5525 socket. So you need to make sure you have the little adapter to be able to hook up to this. We have a quite a powerful LED light here. We have an on off button here, and this actually switches the DC components on and off. So that's everything you see here, and also the cigarette lighter uh, output on the back. And this is a little light switch which actually controls the LED light. So on the back, we have our two uh, AC outputs here. So combined, uh, well overall, they can give you up to 300 watts output. We have our uh, cigarette lighter output here, and this is again 12 volts and 10 amps output. And we have the switch here, which actually switches these particular ports on and off, as you can see from the graphic there. And we also have the input here, and this input covers everything from charging from mains, solar, and from a car. So that's the quick look round done. So let's have a look at the display now and switching this on and off. So I'm hoping this is visible. So if you push and hold the button on the front for a few seconds, it should switch all the DC components on. So I'm hoping you can see that now. So we've got USB, which means these are now active. Uh, 12 volt there means that this port's now active. And the car there means that the cigarette lighter output on the back of this is also active. So to switch off again, all you need to do is just push and hold that for a few seconds and that should go off. And now for the next one, which is on the back, which is the AC port here, all you need to do is just switch it on like that. And that also displays on the, uh, the front as well. So if we turn that round, and I'm hoping you can see that. Now we've got an AC there, which is uh, displayed, meaning that the ports on the back are now active. We've got the 86% there again, that's the state of charge of the battery. We've got a little temperature symbol there which flashes or changes depending on the temperature of the unit. So that really covers that off and there's a few things on screen at the moment just showing you the other type of symbols that might come up. Right, so first up is the supplied power brick here. As you can see I've got it plugged in, it's got a little light on in the top corner just to indicate it's on. And as you can see on here as well, it's a 15 volt 3 amp supply, so good for about 45 watts. 
What I will say is that will take a little while to charge this, bearing in mind this is 384 watt hours uh, in this particular unit. So you literally, like anything else, you just plug this straight into the only input that you've got on here and then leave it to charge. 12 volt charging time now, so if you're charging on the move in your car or your camper, I'm just using my EB150 here to show you the kind of watts this charge is at, because obviously the Buden's display doesn't show what's in or what's out. So let's just plug this in, make sure this is switched on so you can see it. And it's the DC one here, the second uh, one down in the display there. And then what that happens is that should charge this now using the MPPT that's built in and find the best charging rate for the Buden's. So as we can see, it's climbing up now. So let's see what that gets up to. And there we have it. It's leveled out at 42 watts. So one good thing about the Buden's unit is the fact it comes with cables in the box and not all solar generators do that. So if you have a solar panel that has MC4 connectors, this cable will work for that. So it has MC4 connectors one end and then the DC5521 the other end to plug straight into the unit. But you might have one of the folding solar panels. So if you do have a folding panel similar to this, then this actually has a DC output here. So this is a DC5525 output and you can actually plug this directly into this unit. All you need is a cable. So this again is a DC5521 to DC5521. And what you can get is a DC5521 to DC5525 adapter. So effectively, at the moment, this won't plug directly into here because it doesn't fit, because this is a 5521 and it won't go into this. So if we put the adapter to turn it into a DC5525, it plugs straight in like so. And then all you need to do is plug this straight into the unit and you can charge from a folding panel as well. So I just wanted to cover off something that I found whilst charging from my solar panels, as in the fact my 60 watt foldable and one of my 100 watt rigid panels, in the fact that it seems that the MPP charge circuit in here has a limit and I haven't been able to get over 45 watts for charging. So even with a 100 watt panel, it's not using much of its capability. So what I've got here is a, just a standard DC power supply. And I'm just gonna show you the voltage as in simulating solar power here and show you how much I can actually get into the unit. So we're gonna start off with a typical volt uh, reading here for a solar panel of 18 volts. And it's currently firing just over 2.3 uh, amps. And it gives us the watt figure at the bottom. And I'm just gonna show you by changing this, the fact that that really doesn't go above 45 watts. So that's 18 watts covered. Let's look at 19. So I've upped it to 19 volts now. As you can see, it's knocked down the amps. So that's what the circuit in here is doing and it's keeping it around 43 watts. So let's go up to 20. And here's 20 volts, and again, it's knocked down the uh, amps a little bit, and it's keeping it in that 43 watt range. And here's 21 volts, and again, it's knocked down the amps, and the watts stays the same. And finally, 22 volts. Now that's up to the limits as stated in the manual. So look, as you can see, it's knocked the amps down again, and it's still within the 43 watt range. So it looks like this has somewhere in the region of 43 or 44 watt charging limit. So onto a very popular topic now, and that's powering your 12 volt devices. Now what I must say is the Buden's unit doesn't have a regulated 12 volt supply, meaning that as your battery charge starts to drop, so does the voltage at the 12 volt port. So the port here at the front, and also the car cigarette lighter output at the back. But one thing I have noticed, and due to the battery chemistry used, this has a very stable output at the 12 volt ports anyway. And even when I've got down to as low as three or 2% left on battery charge remaining, the voltage has stayed just above 12 volts and only drops down to under 12 volts when it gets down to 1%. So you're really covered on that front. So I've just powered up the DC by using the button at the front here. And we've got about 67% of battery charge. So I'll just show you what we get on the cigarette lighter at the back. So that's coming in about 13.5 volts. So you normally knock off about 0.1 due to the accuracy of this. So what I'll do is I'll just flip it round and then plug in on the front uh, 12 volt port to show you what we get on there. Because in theory, they should both match up. So let's plug that one in there. And there we have it. So 13.5 indicated, so about 13.4 at 67% charge.
So I get quite a lot of questions about whether you can use these kind of devices whilst you're charging them. And I just want to show you that this is currently charging at 42 uh, watts via the car cigarette lighter cable here. And I've got a, just a standard smart bulb connected up to the back to the AC. So I'm just going to switch that on now just to show you. And there we have it. It's switched on now using this while it's charging. Right, time for a classic and noisy inverter test. So I've got the hairdryer here, which again, not much use in my life for that now. The Budens has a 300 watt inverter limit and that's split between both of the AC outlets. So I'm just gonna switch that on now via the switch at the back. And uh, it's showing on there and I'm hoping that's visible. We've got 89% of the battery available. And the problem with this uh, display is the fact it doesn't show you what's in or what's out. So what I've got here is I've got a standard sort of watt meter here to measure how much it's actually using so that we get some kind of idea where we are when the inverter cuts out. So that's zeroed in, ready to go. I'm gonna switch it on now. It's on the coolest setting and obviously once I switch it on, I'm gonna do fan setting one and then fan setting two and see where we go from there. So sorry about the noise in advance. Well, that's a bit of a surprise actually. Because that's showing that it's using 416 watts at the socket. And bearing in mind this has a 300 watt limit. Very surprised. Okay, so I'm going to switch it up now to uh, the second setting. Wow, and it's still going. So we're now at 460 odd watts. Bearing in mind this has a 300 watt limit, I'm very surprised. So it's going way over what I was expecting. I'm just gonna switch that down now. Again, I'm hoping you can still see this. Okay, I'm going to switch that off. Now that went way over and it stayed there as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try it again and I'm just going to switch it up to the next heat setting. So I'm hoping that's visible on screen. So I'm going to go to heat setting two and then see what we can get on here and see whether the inverter trips. I'm expecting it to. I wasn't expecting it to go as far as it did in the first place. So let's see what it does. And there we go. It's tripped. It's tripped instantly. And there we have it there. I'm hoping you can see that on screen there. We've got the flashing AC uh, symbol on there, which means that the inverter has tripped out. We need to switch it off and switch it back on to reset it. So there we have it. A successful test going way over the 300 watt inverter limit. So it has to be the lithium ion phosphate batteries that power this solar generator. And the fact you can get an estimated 2000 cycles before they hit 80% capacity. And it has to be the inverter, which is rated at 300 watts continuous with a 600 watt peak. And yet I've been able to run over that 300 watts for extended periods without any problems. So first up, it has to be the rate at which you can charge this unit and going above that 45 watt limit would have been great. So if you're thinking about getting a solar panel specifically to use with this unit, then there's no point going above 60 watts. But if you already have something that's larger than that, then it will work without any problems. And it has to be the display. Although it's functional and it tells you the state of charge and it has some key indicators on there, I think putting some kind of what's in or what's out on there and some time to charge or discharge would have been much better and comparable to other units on the market. We hoped you liked our video. All the links you'll need will be in the description below. Please like, share, subscribe and hit the bell icon. And stay tuned to Da Vinci.